Chapter 7 of The Silmarils and the Unrest of the Noldor Using all of his knowledge, skill, and power, Feanor creates the greatest objects that the world has ever seen. Three jewels called Silmarils. They look like diamonds, but they contain the blended light of the two trees. Ah, so they shine in darkness. But they shine even brighter in light, actually. Um, they're so strong, physically strong, that no one and nothing can actually break them. And to this day, no one knows exactly what they're made of. And we know this because the second paragraph just flat out tells us Feanor's gonna die, he's gonna stay in the halls of Mandos until the end of the world, and then we will find out how he made the Silmarils. Like, he'll finally spilled beans. Everyone in Amman is amazed by these jewels, and Varda hallows them, so that thereafter no mortal flesh, nor hands unclean, nor anything of evil will might touch them. But it was scorched and withered. So that means if you're mortal and or evil, then the jewels will just burn your skin. You can't actually physically touch them. And of course, Melkor lusts after them, because he's the absolute worst, right? So the making of the Silmarils actually sets him on a path of crafty and destructive plans. How can he sow the seeds of mistrust between elves and Valar? How can he get his hands on these shiny new obsessions of his? And how can he destroy Feanor? He starts to spread rumors among the Noldor. First, he tells them that they could have ruled their own mighty realms freely back in Middle-earth, but the Valar were jealous of their beauty and skill, so the Valar feared they wouldn't be able to control the elves, so that's why they summoned them to Amman. Second, he tells them about the race of men, which the Valar have known about since the vision Iluvatar gave them back during the music, we remember that, but the Valar haven't told the elves yet. So Melkor is letting the cat out of the bag on that one. But the ironic thing is that he actually doesn't even know that much about men because during that part of the vision, he didn't really pay attention because he was so obsessed with his own nonsense. So he tells the elves that men will take over Middle Earth, thus supplanting the elves' rightful place in it. And where that's kind of, it's kind of partly true, it's also a serious twisting of the truth. And now Valinor is poisoned with murmurs of Melkor's lies. And some of the Noldor start to become resentful of the Valar and desire the lands of Middle-earth. And Feanor wants to go to far-off lands and rule in them most of all. And Melkor is loving this because Feanor was his original target for all of these lies and machinations in the first place. And meanwhile, Feanor is getting a little greedy and jealous over his Silmarils. He sometimes wears them on his brow at great feasts, but other than that, he likes to hoard them in his secret chambers in Tyrion, and only lets his father and his seven sons look at them. And nobody else gets to see them, so Melkor really can't get near them, which is what he actually wants. And Melkor starts new lies regarding Feanor and his younger half-brother Fingolfin. The lie directed at Feanor is that Fingolfin and his sons are planning to usurp the leadership of Finwë and of Feanor and his line. And they're going to do this with the permission of the Valar because the Valar are unhappy that Feanor is hoarding the Silmarils. The lie directed at Fingolfin and also at the youngest brother, Finarfin, is that Feanor never liked you guys. He's got your father wrapped around his little finger. It won't be long before he kicks you guys out of Tyrion now that he's the hotshot maker of the Silmarils. And finally, Melkor gets the Noldor to start building some serious weaponry. Swords, axes, spears, shields, armor. You have to keep in mind, those are weird things to have in Amman. Remember that this is supposed to be the Undying Lands. Elves will hunt for wild game with bows and arrows and stuff like that, but there's no need for swords and armor. There's no war in Amman ever, so this is not good. And Feanor is now talking about rebellion openly, saying he'll lead the Noldor back to Middle-earth. It's so bad that Finwë holds a council, and Fingolfin goes to him and says, 
uh, Dad, last time I checked, you're still the king. Do something about Feanor. Come on. And speak the devil, Feanor comes marching in, dressed in full armor. And then he draws his sword and yells at Fingolfin. Aha! Of course you're here with Dad, trying to weasel your way into his good graces. Get out of here and go back to your place. And Fingolfin just silently bows to Finwe and leaves, completely ignoring Feanor. Feanor follows him out of the room and then points the tip of his sword right up against Fingolfin. And he says, if I ever see you trying to usurp my place and the love of my father again, I'm going to kill you. And this happens in front of a lot of witnesses. A lot of people are walking around seeing this. Uh, this is just out in the open in the city square in Tyrion. But just like before, Fingolfin leaves quietly, walks through the crowd, and everyone's just like, uh, what the heck is going on? Meanwhile, the Valar only hear about discontent from Feanor, so they think he's the original instigator because Melkor was clever enough to start the rumors in secret and kind of cover his tracks. So they don't know all this brouhaha originally comes from him. The Valar brought the elves to Amon willingly, and they won't prevent them from leaving if they really want to. It would be a dumb idea to leave, but the Valar cannot force their will upon the elves. Elves have free will, remember. But they can't just ignore all of Feanor's trash talking, so they summon him to the Ring of Doom to answer questions. They also summon everyone else who was involved, so Fingolfin is there too. They finally get to the bottom of it and find out it really did all come from Melkor, but Feanor is still guilty of breaking the peace of the land by threatening his brother. So Mandos says, look, what you did was wrong anywhere in Arda, not just here. Uh, now you have to leave Tyrion for 12 years. Think about what you did, and if others want to forgive you after that, then we'll let bygones be bygones. So that's your punishment. And then Fingolfin quickly says, I'll forgive him now. Uh, but Feanor doesn't say anything and just leaves in silence. He then goes into exile in the north of Valinor and builds a stronghold called Formenos. His sons go into exile with him along with some followers. So now that place is a big treasury where a bunch of jewels along with the Silmarils and weapons are kept. Finwe actually follows his son Feanor into exile leaving Fingolfin to rule the rest of the Noldor in Tyrion. It's ironic that Fingolfin is ruling Tyrion because that's what Feanor was originally paranoid about. But of course, it's not Fingolfin's fault. But now there will be a lot of bad blood between the sons of Feanor and the sons of Fingolfin. And meanwhile, Melkor is in hiding because he's been very naughty, as usual, and Tulkas is looking for him to kick his butt but he eventually slinks his way up to Formenos and talks to Feanor in front of the gates, trying to remind him of how nice it would be to escape to Middle-earth. And Melkor tells Feanor that he can help him escape. And Feanor, still bitter from his trial in the Ring of Doom, kind of considers Melkor's offer. He toys with the idea that maybe he can use Melkor's help just long enough to get to Middle-earth and then get rid of him afterwards. And Melkor, who's happy that Feanor is actually considering this, he messes up. He oversteps due to his overwhelming lust for the Silmarils. He reveals his true intentions when he says, uh, this place is safe for the Silmarils, but surely they won't stay safe for long in the realm of the Valar. That, do oh, oh, that does it. When Feanor hears the word Silmarils, he immediately knows that Melkor's after them, and he shuts him down with an epic burn. Get thee gone from my gate, thou jail crow of Mandos. Ouch. Let's just pause for a moment and consider this. Melkor is the most powerful of the Ainur. More powerful than Manwe, even. He's been around for a long time. And Feanor is just a child of Iluvatar. He can be killed. Melkor could easily kill him right now. But Feanor is so overtaken with protectiveness over his own work, the Silmarils, in combination with his own pride and exceedingly profound confidence. He's a little crazy, but they don't call him Spirit of Fire for nothing. And Melkor is so mad 
Hufinwe is actually worried about what just happens, so he sends word to the Valar, and the Valar find out that Melkor stormed through the Kalakiria, past Tyrion, and up north past Alqualonde. So Melkor is out of the region of Valinor. He's escaped because he's on the eastern side of the Pelori Mountains. Everyone feels a little bit better now that he's gone, but they still feel doubt and a low-key sort of dread about what might happen in the future with him lurking somewhere out there. <laughs> 